Let's take a look at the molecular geometry for SBr2. At first glance, you might think that it's just a linear molecule. Looks like everything's in a straight line. However, we have the two bromines on either side. That makes sense. But we need to take into account these lone pair of electrons. They'll influence the molecular geometry for SBr2. So according to valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, the two bromines will spread out, as will those two non-bonding pair of electrons. So we're not going to have a simple linear molecule here. Let's take a look at the AXN notation to figure out the molecular geometry for SBr2. A, that's the central sulfur. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to the central sulfur. We have two bromines. And then N, those are the pairs of non-bonding electrons, sometimes called lone pairs. So we have one, two pairs. So that's going to have a two right there. You could have memorized that AX2N2 is a bent molecular geometry. Or if you have a table available, you can look it up. So we can go down our table, AX2, 3, all up to 6, AX2, N, and then AX2, N2, which is a bent molecular geometry, and the bond angles be about 109.5 degrees. The molecular geometry for SBr2 is similar to that of water. Let's take a look at the H2O molecule. You can see the bent shape with the two lone pair of electrons on top of the molecule here, which is just how it would be with SBr2. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for SBr2, and thanks for watching.